Okay, thank you everyone for joining us tonight for the self-registration workshop webinar. We are super excited to have you. I'm joined tonight by my colleague, Dr. Nicole Morantonio, who works in academic advising with me. And we are joined by uh, Kristen Ball and Erica Jackson, um, both who, of whom work in our registrar's office. So I will pass this off to Dr. Morantonio and we will begin. Great, hello all, welcome, and we're gonna get started. All right, um, so again, welcome to our self-registration workshop. Um, and so what we wanted to do was just provide an overview of the self-registration process, demonstrate how to self-register, and to answer any questions that you may have. So to begin, um, where are we in the fall registration process? Um, please know um, pre-registration, as you know, is now over. Um, so at this point, as of July 24th, you've been able to see the courses for which you've been pre-registered on BannerWeb. So at this point, at this stage, you should be meeting with your summer advisor. Um, these meetings are intended to help review the courses for which you've been pre-registered um, and to strategize for self-registration. Now, if you haven't yet heard from your summer advisor or don't know who they are, um, please let us know. You can reach out at advising at richmond.edu. We wanna hear from you. Now, you may be wondering what is self-registration and how is it different from pre-registration, since this is really the next phase in the registration process. We are moving toward self-registration, which opens on Wednesday, August 9th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please be sure to be ready, right on the dot. Self-registration enables you to add courses up to four and a half units as well as to make changes to your existing schedule. So if there are changes that you do wish to make, you will be able to do that once self-registration opens. As you prepare for self-registration, you should be creating another plan. This plan though should include courses for which you still intend to register. So your remaining units plus a section of well 100. So our wellness requirement required of it all incoming students. The end goal for self-registration is that it comes to a close with a full schedule. And so a full schedule means at least three and a half units to be a full-time student, plus that well 100 class. Now, now that this is kind of the basics of self-registration, we did wanna address a few questions that we've heard um, and want to, to hopefully answer right off the bat. First, a question that we've heard from incoming students is what happens if a course that I want is full? So one suggestion that we have um, is do not put it on your plan um, for registration. Um, if a course is full, if you try to register for it, you won't be able to enroll. We will, however, talk a little bit more once we turn it over to Kristen, how to um, add yourself to a wait list. So there are other ways in which you can potentially, hopefully down the line, get into a course. But if you aren't able, if it's currently full um, and there are no seats remaining, it's not recommended that, we, that you put it on your plan now. Thank you, Dr. M. Another popular question that we receive is about how many backup classes you should have. We recommend that for every class on your plan, you have at least three to five backup classes that you could substitute in should you need to on the morning of registration. Next question. What if I want to switch my FYS? One thing I will say is please, please, please do not drop a first year seminar for which you have been pre-registered. If there are seats in a section, 
I would strongly encourage you not to drop anything, but instead to conditional add drop. And this is something that'll be demoed shortly. Um, but because of this, the seat limits on first year seminars and the inability to add any additional students over 16, um, those course caps are firm. Um, so if there is movement, if you do drop a first year seminar, it's very difficult to pick it up again. Um, you would have to, if you wanted to get back into a course that you dropped yourself from, um, you would need to re-add to a wait list. So again, those wait lists will open and we'll be talking more about wait lists shortly. But switch your FYS, I would say with caution. Thank you. Another popular question is, where are my AP or IB score credits? You can find your AP scores if you've sent them to us through the College Board. Um, you can find those in Grad Tracker, and you can access Grad Tracker from your Student Services tab, which is where you would also locate your registration link. And so, one last question um, that we are hearing um, has to do with language placement. And so we encourage you to review the language placement page on New Spiders, um, which will provide you with guidelines for language placement for courses that we do offer at the University of Richmond. However, if you are fluent in a language other than English, um, you can complete the for, or a language that we don't offer at the university. You can also complete a form um, also list linked from the site um, that you would be able to set up a, a placement exam. Um, so you would be able to coordinate with the global studio. So there are a few different ways in which you could address that question about language placement. And so at this point, we know that there are a few questions in the chat. We're gonna hold those until the very end of the webinar um, because we are recording and wanna make sure that these questions are saved um, and that you have a reference to refer back to. So at this point though, we'll be turning it over to Kristen Ball, our university registrar, to demo how to go about this pre uh, self-registration. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. I'm glad everybody's here tonight and I'm excited to be able to show you how to do the self-registration on your own. Um, let's see, I'm gonna stop your screen sharing, Nicole. Go to mine. Okay, so I have logged into BannerWeb. Um, I've logged in as a test student and this is our test system. So things might look slightly different, especially in terms of course caps and things like that, but the process is the same. Um, so you should all be familiar with BannerWeb. That's where you made your um, plans for pre-registration and you're going to go back here to register as well. Once you log in, you're gonna to go to your student services menu and then registration and then student registration and then student registration self-service. And you'll get back to a page that looks familiar. It is like where you um, made your plans before. So, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make a plan that you're gonna use for the first round of registration on the ninth. You can go to the plan ahead button again, and you pick your term for which you would like to plan ahead, which is fall 23. Okay. And here you can, you see that your, your plans from earlier um, that you made and you can keep them or you can delete them. If you wanna delete them, you just use the delete button here to get rid of them, um, but you can also keep them if you wish. Um, and I'm going to make a new plan by clicking on create a new plan. Now in this view, I can see the classes for which I was pre-registered for. Um, I have two, I have an FYS and I have my art history class. So I'm going to be planning around those classes. Um, I'm going to do a search and you can search by subject. If you just type any part of a subject, it will pull up anything that has that part of the subject in it. You can enter more than one subject into the search bar. Um, I recommend just doing one at a time just because it would be pages to scroll through if you do um, enter multiple um, subjects, but you can. So I've picked my subject. I want to look for a biology class and I'm going to search for biology. 
Now in the planning view, when you search for a class, it pulls up every class in the catalog. So it's not necessarily classes that are being offered in the semester, but it's every possible class. Um, so I just wanted to show how you can tell if there's an actual section of that class being offered um, in this particular semester. Um, so say I was interested in biology 216, this botany class. If I click on view sections and nothing comes up here, that means that that course is not being offered in the fall. So I should not choose it to add to my plan. I also wanted to show how you can see if you are eligible to register for a class by having the required prerequisites or restrictions or things like that. So say I was interested in this human physiology class and I clicked on view sections. There is a section of human physiology being offered in the fall. I can see the times and days. Um, I can see the seats remaining and I can see the instructors. If I click on the course title, I can see additional information. I can see the course description and also any text that applies to that particular section. So here it shows that this class has departmental approval required and you have to contact Dr. Vaughn if you would like to register for the class. I can also see any um, restrictions on the class. And this shows me that I must be in one of these schools, which all of you are in the School of Arts and Sciences. So if, you're, if that's on the list, then you are eligible to register. It also shows that this class requires a departmental approval as we saw on the course description with the contact information for Dr. Vaughn. There's not always contact information for the um, departmental approval. So if you don't see that in the course description, you can um, look at the directory and contact the department chair and or their admin um, to get more information on that process to see if they're able to do a, um, a departmental approval. Another good thing to check are your prerequisites. This tells you what classes you have to have taken before you can take the class. And in this case, in order to take biology 220, I would need to have chemistry 141 and biology 200 or 206. Um, most of you aren't going to have the prerequisites. In some cases, you'll have AP credit that will be the prerequisite and you'll be able to see the AP credit on your Richmond transcript to see if you meet the prereqs. But um, in many cases, you, you won't have the prereqs. So definitely check for prerequisites before you try and register for anything. If you don't have them, then you won't be able to register for the class. So I can get all that information by clicking on the course title. So I know that I can't add physiology because I don't have the prerequisites. So I'm going to look for something that maybe I can add such as a 100 level, so an entry level biology class. And this modern concepts in biology looks interesting. So if I go to view sections, I can see that there are four sections here. I can see what times and days they are so I can try not to have them interfere with the classes for which I'm already registered. And I think I like this one with the Thursday or the Wednesday afternoon lab and the class on Tuesday and Thursday. So I'm just gonna click add and you can see it adds in the bottom right corner of my screen to my plans and it shows as pending. Um, in addition to biology, I think I would like to take a history. So I go back to the search again and I can change my subject out for history. And I can search history and view the sections of History 199, which is a nice entry level class. And I think that this one, I can also see here what um, requirements this class fulfills. So historical studies is one of our gen ed requirements and I can see that this fulfills that requirement. So I'm going to add the history to my plan. And then finally, all first year students are required to take the WELL 100. So I'm gonna add a section of WELL 100 to my plan also. Um, and there are lots of sections of WELL 100 spread across the day. Um, they meet once a week um, for an hour and 15 minutes. So I will just pick um, a section of that and add that to my plan as well. When I'm satisfied with my plan, which I am just putting on two units because I'm only allowed to register for up to four and a half units and I'm already in two units. I'm going to save my plan. You can name your plan anything you want this time. There's no restrictions on the naming like there were for the first round. So you can just call it whatever you want and save it. 
So my save was successful. If there was an error, I would have a red box up in the upper right hand corner um, and it would tell me what my errors were. But now I have a plan. Now, one other thing you're gonna wanna do when you've made your plan is to add a note to just one of the classes. This is gonna be important later when you go to register from a plan because it will allow you to enter all of the classes at once into registration instead of doing them one by one. It doesn't matter what the note says, um, this is not a ranking system. It's not going to impact what you know, the order it looks for classes. There just needs to be a note of any kind on one of the classes. So I'm just going to use my initials, click save, and I can see that I have a note by the red check. So now I'm happy with my saved plan. And I can go back to plan ahead. And it will show me my saved plan. So this is my test plan that I just created. It's the first plan I have, so it's already marked preferred. If you have other plans, if you want to save the plans you originally made or whatever, um, you can change the new plan to preferred and that just makes it pop to the top of the list so it'll be easier to find when you do go to register. Um, but if you leave it as non-preferred, you'll just have to look for it further down the list. And again, if I want to change my mind between now and August 9th, I can do so by editing. Um, I can delete the plan and start over. I can do any of that um, if I would like to do so. So I have my plan. You can make multiple plans. So you can make a backup plan if you would like. You can have up to three plans um, in the planning. You, you don't have to register from a plan for the first round of self-registration. You should make a plan, but then when you're going to fill in, like say you only get one of the two classes or something like that, you can either register from a plan or register individually for classes. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, so it's time to register. It's 8.55 on um, August 9th, 8.55 Eastern, and we're ready to get we're about to get ready to register. So you'll log in and this is where you'll see for registration. And this time you're gonna to wanna to go to register for classes. Okay, when I do that, I get an action item processing. You can also do this ahead of time, which actually I would recommend um, because you're gonna um, not wanna have this blocking you to get to registration, but um, you have an action item that you have to do. Sorry, I canceled instead of hit continue. When you get here, you're gonna to wanna to hit continue and you'll see on the left what the action item is. It's your financial responsibility. So when I click on that, just anywhere in that box, it brings up the financial responsibility agreement. Um, feel free to read through this. It basically just says that um, you understand that you're registering and you're gonna to need to pay for the classes and some other caveats to that. So click agree, click save. My save was successful. I have accepted the agreement and I can click continue to go back to registration. Again, you can do this now um, to get it out of the way so you don't have to worry about it on registration morning and I would recommend doing that. So now I'm ready to register. I'm registering for fall of 2023. And there are different ways you can register for classes. You can find classes, which is essentially what I just did in planning, but you're doing it in registration. That will take time, of course, that we recommend that you have a plan for your first round. And then if you need to do, fill in, you can come to find classes. You can register by CRN. The CRN is a five digit, digit course number. You see on all courses here, it is in my um, summary of classes. But when you're browsing classes, you can see that too. Um, but that's not necessarily the most efficient way to do it. I can also register from a plan. So um, I come in, if I had multiple plans, they would all be listed here and I could pick which plan I wanted to do. Again, my preferred plan is gonna be at the top. And I can either add courses individually from my plan or because I put a note on one of my classes, this add all button appears. So I can add them all at once to my registration and you'll see they show up in my summary down here. So, and you can tell I've registered for two and I've got three classes pending. So I add them into my registration. And then in order to register for the classes, I hit submit down in the bottom right corner and it will go through the checking. And now it tells me that I am registered. 
for all of these classes. If I am unable to register for a class, it will give me an error message in red telling me why I can't register, whether it's the class is full or I don't have the prerequisite or it's a time conflict or something like that. It will let me know what the issue was so that I can sort that out. Um, you see that I'm registered. You can see in the schedule view on the left side, my uh, picture view of my schedule, if it helps me to view it like that. Um, and then if I were to want to drop one of these classes later on, I can just come to the action box and pick drop delete course and submit, and then it will be dropped from my schedule. I don't wanna do that right now because I'm happy with this and I wanna show you some other things, but if I decide to drop, this is where I would come to do the dropping as well. So if I'm happy with this, I'm done. I don't need to make any other changes. I have a schedule, I'm full-time, I have four units and my wellness and everything is great. Um, but say maybe I'm interested in a different FYS class than the one that I got. Um, and like Dr. Morantonio said, you wanna be very careful about swapping out your FYS because there are not, um, sorry, um, a lot of classes are closed. All FYS classes have a wait list on them. So if the class is closed, you'll be able to see that where the bright red, where it says this class is full, zero seats remain, but it is telling me that there are 10 waitlist seats available. So I can add myself to the waitlist. All waitlists are capped at 10 students. So if people start getting off and the waitlist was full, you can add yourself to the waitlist, um, but it will tell you how many waitlist seats are available. And here, um, there's 10 waitlists, and this is not a time conflict because you'll see it tells me already that there's a time conflict with these two classes. So I don't want to register for them unless I'm planning to drop something else. But I'm interested in open water, so I want to add myself to the waitlist. I click add on the right hand side, and it comes into my summary box. I click submit, and it tells me that I have errors. Um, in the upper right hand corner, it's big and the bottom it's small, but it tells me it's a duplicate. So I'm already in an FYS and this is a second FYS. You're only allowed to register for one FYS, but it's also telling me that the class is closed. Now I can put myself on an FYS wait list while still being registered. I just couldn't register myself for this class while still in my other FYS. So to put myself on the wait list, I click the drop down box and I click wait list and submit. And now I'm on the wait list for open water. Um, the wait list is automated and it will turn on as soon as registration comes on. So you can start adding yourself. And if a space becomes available, you will get an email saying that a space has become available for you in the class. Um, and you have 12 hours in which to register. And that's a firm 12 hours. As soon as the 12 hours are over, it goes to the next person on the list. The email will tell you when your 12 hours expires. Um, so just pay attention to that. And if um, you don't get to it in the 12 hours, like I say, it goes to the next person on the list. And as Dr. Morantonio said, if you drop a class um, that has a wait list on it, you won't be able to get your seat back. You'll need to put yourself on the wait list. So please be careful, especially with FYS, about making sure that there's an actual seat in the class before you do a drop. Okay, so now I am on the wait list for this class. Um, now I'm rethinking my schedule, thinking, well, maybe I actually wanna swap some of these classes out. I think I would like to take a rhetoric class. I'm gonna look for rhetoric. And I just typed RHC because those letters are in the subject code. And then I click on the subject and I click search and I see the rhetoric classes that are being offered this semester. So I'm interested in registering for this interpersonal 102, but I see it's a time conflict. So I'm gonna, I still wanna add it into my plan. So it's, it's in my plan now. And it is a time conflict with my art history class, which I can see in my um, viewable schedule over here that it's in gray because it's in my planned, but it's not in actual registration and it's conflicting with art history. So I want to drop my art history class. So I'm gonna pick drop delete class here, um, but I only want to drop art history if I can definitely get that seat in rhetoric. So I'm going to do a conditional add drop by clicking the conditional add drop box at the bottom. 
and clicking submit. And it was able to successfully register me for interpersonal. So then it dropped me from the art history class. Now the art history class is still here if I wanna get rid of it because I don't like the view and don't like having to scroll through it. If I click submit again, it will make the art history class disappear from this side. And you can see that now I'm registered for interpersonal and no longer in art history. But let's try a conditional drop ad on a class that I'm not going to be able to get into. So I'm also interested in public speaking. Um, I see it has a time conflict um, with my, something else on my schedule. So it has a time conflict with my FYS. Again, don't drop your FYS unless you have another one to get into, but this is just for the purposes of demonstration. Um, so I'm going to do a conditional drop ad with my FYS. So I click drop, I've got the public speaking up here. I click the conditional drop ad button and click submit. And it tells me it was not able to register me for public speaking um, because the section has reached capacity. So it did not register me for that, but it did keep me in my FYS class because I told it to only drop FYS if I was able to get in public speaking. So that's how conditional drop ad works. If there's a space, it will do the swap. If there's not a space, then it keeps you in what you're originally registered for. So it's handy like that so you don't make a mistake with registration and unintentionally drop something that you want to keep. Again, to get rid of that, I will click submit and then my schedule is nice and clean on this side. So you can um, do all sorts of things to make the schedule more viewable um, so you can see bigger um, search or bigger schedule, things like that with the buttons in the middle of this. So I um, believe that has covered all of the little tips and tricks for um, doing the registration yourself. And once registration opens on the um, 9th, it will be open through the drop ad period. Um, many classes are a five day drop ad only, which means you have to do it by the end of the fifth day of class, which is uh, Friday, September something, <laughs> that first Friday in September. <laughs> Sorry. Um, some classes you can drop an ad into the second week, but please be careful with that. Most of them you need to do within the first week of class because a lot of them, if you miss more than one week of class, you're gonna be too far behind to catch up. And FYS are all um, drop ad within the first five days. But you'll be able to make changes to your schedule from now up through the, um, the drop ad period after classes start. Also keep in mind that returning students will be making um, schedule adjustments starting on Saturday, the 26th of August. So you can see some movement with seats once they start to do their changes as well. So with that, unless there's anything else, um, Nicole or Andrea, that you wanted me to show, I will stop sharing and we can answer some of the questions that have come in. Okay, our first question is, do presidential scholars also register at that time? And that would be during um, open registration beginning August 9th. Yes, they do. Yep, there's no more priority registration during this registration period. Next question is, so just to confirm, we need to register for a wellness class as well? Yes, everybody needs a Well 100 class. Okay. Um, the next question, I think maybe more um, of a personal question and I might need to talk with the advisor, but the question is, my son is registered for two FYS classes in history. So all he needs is one wellness and one foreign language, or if not foreign language, two other classes of any kind. Um, and so I think with that question, it's probably best to talk with the advisor um, to determine exactly what that schedule looks like before we give you a definite answer on how that schedule looks. Um, the next question is, so for each class, including our FYS course, we should add three plus backups on registration day. Andrea, do you wanna take that? <laughs> I can take that one, I can clarify my answer. Um, so when when you're creating your plan, if you're going to use that plan for registration, you only want to put the two classes and your Well 100 
on that plan, run it. I like to have on a piece of paper next to me or a spreadsheet on a second screen, a list of backup CRNs for each of the classes that I'd like to get into, just in case when I hit submit, one of them comes back full. I can quickly, at a glance, locate what backup would work for that time slot or subject or any number of things. Um, that's, that's how I think about that as far as backups are concerned. Thank you. If a class here says there are no spots available, does that mean we cannot register for it during self-registration? Yes, if a class says that it's full and has zero of however many seats available, then that means you can't register during self-registration. Now you can keep checking back because it's possible that another student would drop um, and you can get in. If the class has a wait list, go ahead and put yourself on the wait list um, and um, hopefully your number will come up with, with the wait list. But again, keep checking your email too if you are on a wait list because those are automated. They might come at 4 a.m. and give you 12 hours, um, but you'll wanna keep an eye out for that. Thank you. Um, can you repeat why we need to add a note for when we register for classes? You had gave that demo on adding the note next to the plan. Yes, when you need to add the note so that when you go to register from your plan, you can add all of the classes at once with just one button instead of adding each class individually from your plan into the registration. How can we fill out the financial responsibility before registration? If you go ahead and click on the register button, you can do that. Um, and also, if you click on the sorry, I'm going back, prepare for registration in that same window, you should get the financial responsibility form then. Thank you. Um, if I've clicked add all button and there's one class that I will be unable to add because it's full, will it register for the other classes automatically? Yes, it will. It will get what it can get for you and then give you the error message on what it can't. Since we are allowed to register for a max of 4.5 units, does this mean we are limited to register for only four chosen classes plus one section of well 100? Either three or four classes, depending if you're taking an intensive language. The intensive language classes in French, Spanish, Italian, that's it. <laughs> I was quizzing myself. Um, those are all two units, um, and the other languages are one unit. So if you're taking one of the intensive, um, intermediate, or elementary, that's two units, and yes, um, then you'll be in three. But otherwise, yes, four classes and a wellness. And the extra half unit, if you want to take a music lesson or something like that, we do have a few half unit classes that you can also add. Could we make a second plan for our backup classes? I think that's totally up to the student. Um, I prefer a piece of paper with my CRNs, um, but I know other students who make other plans with a list of backups and they easily navigate and find something that fits. So it, it totally depends on your, um, your comfort level and how, how well you, you know your schedule. Thank you. Are we allowed to take more than 4.5 units? So starting in um, in uh, the end of August, so the on Friday the 25th, you can register for up to 5.5 units, but up until that point, you're only capped at four and a half. Um, five and a half is the maximum um, for a full-time student without going over in charges. And Nicole, do you wanna speak more about why we make that recommendation? <laughs> Um, so I would just say really for the fall semester, especially um, as an incoming student, you want to take some time to acclimate to campus, to get a sense of the different workloads and the different types of courses, get familiar with campus itself, become involved in organizations, and really become a part of the campus community. And so um, that initial um, cap on the number of units that you can um, register for is really intended to to kind of 
provide a starting place. Um, you will certainly have a full schedule and there'll be plenty to keep you busy. Yeah, I would, I would add to that. Remember Well 100, though not a credit bearing course, is a class that you have to show up every week. So it, it will, for some of you, feel like you already have five classes. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind too. And I always also like to remind people that um, it require, we require 35 units to graduate, which means five semesters, you can take four units and just three semesters, you need five units. So four units is not at all outside of the norm. Thank you. Do freshmen have to register for a language class? So I'll jump in on that. Um, so the short answer is no. Um, outside of first year seminar, which you're required to take one section in the fall and one section in the spring and your well 100, which you're required to take in fall semester, there isn't a requirement that you have to complete your language at a particular time. Um, we certainly encourage students to try to take it sooner um, rather than later, just because it's probably more, it's closer to the time that you've studied it or used the language, um, but certainly you're not required to take it um, in your fall semester or even spring semester of your first year. Again, it will vary from student to student, um, again, depending on the language and depending on um, where you place. Um, so it's not a requirement. Um, it's certainly something to think about in terms of your planning for the future, um, but I wouldn't worry if it's not a course that you are necessarily registered for right now, or if you aren't able to get in um, because there aren't seats available. Thank you. How do I know what general education requirements I need to fulfill? Are they different depending on the major? So um, if you haven't already looked at Grad Tracker, which is a link um, on the student menu and banner web, you can check Grad Tracker. That is your um, degree audit system, and it shows you what all the general education requirements are, what you have fulfilled either with um, past credit like AP, and what you're registered for that might fulfill the requirement. And it also shows you your, there's a place you can click on it to show which classes meet those requirements. Um, so that's going to be your best source. And once you declare a major, you can also um, look on Grad Tracker for your major requirements. You can also run what if scenarios even before you declare your major. So you can look and see what um, the major requirements are. Thank you. How do, do classes with labs count as two credit hours or are they counted together? The labs are a part of the one unit that you take for each class. So like a biology class with lab is one unit. Another um, about presidential scholars, um, just want a little bit more clarification on what is priority registration for them and were we able to pre-register already and recently found out who their advisor is. I just need a little more clarification. Um, so presidential Oliver Hill scholars get priority registration along with other designated scholar groups and priority registration is usually um, the afternoon um, before registration starts during the year. For this summer, we did priority registration for those designated groups um, before we did the preferred plans for the non-designated um, groups. And at this point, everybody's going into registration on the 9th at the same time because they've, the priority people have already gotten their priority registration. I think, Kristen, um, presidential scholars don't get priority. It's the Richmond scholars who do. Presidential Oliver Hill get. Right. But not, not without the Oliver Hill part. Right. How do we know if we should take intermediate or elementary language? So I'll jump in on this. Um, so I would refer back to the language placement. We'll put it um, in the chat. Um, the language placement site um, on New Spiders provides you with all of the information on the placements for the different languages that we offer, um, and also some guidelines depending on how much experience you have um, previously studying a language. So I would point you to that as a reference. Um, some of the placement exams are offered depend, um, 
they're offered online. And in some cases, you may be able to find out your placement immediately. Um, so I would certainly recommend um, checking that out soon. Thank you. If I click on the registration menu and it says you're not permitted to register at this time and nothing else comes up, does that mean I already filled out the financial responsibility? Is there some way to check if I did? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. Um, oh, Andrea, go. Yeah. Instead of clicking on the register link, click on prepare for registration. Okay. And then you can see. Yeah. And if you have questions about the, um, the, tuition payment agreement, the Bursar's office um, can also talk you through that. They're available at bursar at richmond.edu. Another language question. If a student is starting a new language, do they need, to, in Latin, do they need two semesters to meet the requirement? Um, so this is a good question. And um, I'm glad that this um, question specifies which language um, because as Kristen mentioned, for students who are taking Italian, French, or Spanish, because those are offered as intensives, those are two semester requirements. Um, however, if you are, say, beginning from the start, um, a language like Latin, um, that is a one unit course over four semesters. Um, so students would be required to take that language um, for four semesters. Thank you. Would listing backup classes in a separate plan be easier to add in quickly? Um, I, I don't know. Kristen, what would you say? Um, I mean, you'd, you have to toggle back and forth between the plan and the registration versus looking up classes or typing in CRN. So it's how fast you toggle versus how fast you type, potentially, I would say. Um, but if you do make a second plan, make sure to put a comment on one of those classes too, so that you can do the add all instead of adding one by one. And our last question, if we're taking an intensive language class, since it's two credits, will we only have three classes plus the wellness first semester? So yes, um, so if you're taking an intensive language, you would have that class, um, which is two units, your first year seminar, and one additional unit um, plus your well 100. So um, that would bring you to, to four units. Um, even though the intensive language is one class, um, there is a reason it's two units. Um, so it will keep you um, in class a number of times, um, seven times total uh, during the week. Um, so there'll be plenty to keep you busy. So that will bring you to the total of four units. So yes, um, the intensive language, your FYS one, additional course and your role 100. Thank you. Um, what happens if your Wi-Fi goes out during pre-registration? It, it is a timed registration. So if you do lose Wi-Fi or you think there's a possibility of you losing Wi-Fi, um, please contact my office at registrar at richmond.edu and we can talk to you about proxy options. But um, once you start registering, if it goes out, unfortunately we can't make any accommodations for that. So if you think you're gonna have sketchy Wi-Fi, get in touch with us. That was our last question at the moment. Are there any other questions? Okay, none have popped up in the question and answer field. Thank you, Erica, for facilitating those. And, and thank you all for your questions. Um, they were great. If in the next um, next week you have other questions pop up, please don't hesitate to reach out to your peer advisor, your summer advisor, our office, the registrar's office, if appropriate. Um, there are, are many people surrounding you for support during registration.
We had one more question pop in as we were talking. Um, it says, so if I have holds, does it mean I'm filled, that I filled the financial responsibility form? If you have no holds, it, nothing shows up when you click prepare for registration and it says you're eligible to register, then yes. Thanks. All right. I think with that, um, oh, one more question. One more. Yes. If we delete our previous plans, does it automatically take us out of the classes those plans registered us for? No. The plans are separate from registration, so you can delete a plan, you will still remain registered. Give it one more, one more minute. Can a student take a language placement test after their first year? Yes. Yes probably recommended that you take that placement exam right before you're ready to start taking your language so that you have the, the most most, um, accurate picture of, of where you are in that study. Okay, everyone, thank you so much again for joining us. It was a pleasure being here this evening. We will post this recording on the New Spiders website um, so that you can access it anytime at your convenience. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.